Hi, Jeff. Um, it's very nice to be here. I was very flattered to be asked to come on because they phoned me up and they said, we'd like you to do a charity show. We didn't really want you. We wanted the thin one, but never mind. Um, and I was like, oh, OK. It's very nice to be here. It's very nice of you to take the trouble to come out here this evening because you could have stayed in and had a lovely, cosy domestic evening at home, couldn't you? You young couples. Daphne, why is your Dutch cap on the draining board? What? <laughs> I wouldn't recommend them Dutch caps. No, because they're too small to make your ears eat. <laughs> so, excuse me. Just having a bit of trouble with my plate text is continued. No, sorry. <laughs> the, the terrible thing is bras. I read this thing once in a magazine, and it was a test to see whether you needed to wear one or not. Uh, and the test was if you could hold a pencil <laughs> underneath. It's very depressing for me. I think I could hold a small branch of W.A. Smith. <laughs> to lift and separate, anyway. I mean, if God had meant them to be lifted and separated, it was one on each shoulder. <laughs> That's magazines for you, they just set you worrying. And they're all sending a copy off each other. I mean, if Cosmopolitan comes out one month with an article, Orgasms and How to Get Them, Woman's Realm will be there the week after, Orgasms and How to Knit Them. <laughs> Serious article this morning in Cosmopolitan. It was called um, "Sexual Harassment at Work." Is it a problem for the self-employed? <laughs> just have to help me voice holes out. This is the only other thing. Because I've had trouble with the cold. Well, snot. I've had trouble with. This is probably a charity show, so we can say words like snot. But I think it's all right. I've got this stuff, um, Sinex, and you put it up in your nose, and it all goes. And you think, well, that's marvellous. Where does it go? <laughs> Take your socks off and you find out. Now, see, I've been swimming, that's why I've got a cold. I go to this very posh pool at White City. There's a terrible draft when the greyhounds go past. <laughs> mainly, it's mainly women, you know. You've got the odd man ploughing up and down like a hairy torpedo. But mainly it's women. And they all swim with their heads out of the water. <laughs> So not to splash their cigarettes. <laughs> and, and I went, and I, and, I, and I lost the contact lens, and they had to drain the whole pool. And I was so embarrassed, I just grabbed the first thing I could see. And I think this is a Veruca. <laughs> Well, I haven't been to the doctor for years, not since I thought you had to be inoculated with the Isle of Man. I still feel you should be. And I went, I went to this little back street and I saw this plaque that said, Dr. Greville, fully qualified doctor and carpet fitter. Let us loose lay your lineup. So I went in, and there's a room full of very sort of poorly looking people, you know, even the goldfish have a little scarf around its neck. And the receptionist said, can I help you? And I said, yes, you could put that machine gun down, please. Can I see the doctor? She said, I'm afraid that's not possible. I said, well, can you draw me a picture of it? <laughs> By the time I've got him to see him, you know, the price of his fingers have gone up three times. But he obviously liked to drink, you know, because the surgical spirit was lying up next to the slim line tonic and the ice bucket. <laughs> and he had a touch with the DTs. I thought of his desk had just clicked on to final rinse and spin. <laughs> You're supposed to go to your chemist, you see, not the doctor, because chemists know everything. So, of course, there's a huge queue of people checking up on the theory of relativity. So, shall I ask the assistant? Well, she looked a bit dim, you know, she stood there buffing up her engagement ring with a bunny in the hand. I thought, no, it's nice to know people can be vacant and engaged, you know, at the same time. There's going to be a party tonight if we finish in time. I'm not very good at parties. I always get there too early. I always get everywhere too early. Turn up at funerals before people have died. I'm just not really good at talking to people, so I always end up sort of clearing glasses and wiping ashtrays. I get invitations now that say, don't bring a bottle, bring a damn cloth. And I always get stuck with those men that nobody else wants to talk to. Remember one with the most terrible toupee? I thought it was he had a very tired gerbil on the top of his head. Kissing him, you see, because this seemed preferable to talking to him. <laughs> and he was a sort of get his tongue right in there, you know, it's a good root round. But they said, what's the matter? You know, you drop something behind my tongue. <laughs> Escape from boring people always getting stuck on landings with couples who've done their own conveyancing. <laughs> Once I got stuck with a man who did his own vasectomy. 
surely you need one other person, you know, just to put their finger on the knob. <laughs> You can't leave a party if you're trying to leave early that somebody having sex on your anorak. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> your bones are mine, thank you. Look, 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 it's a heavy cross. I need to, I need to really um, lower the tone. This is, a, this is a little monologue for Christmas, entitled, It Was Christmas Eve in the Crescent. It was Christmas Eve in the Crescent. All the children were in their pyjamas. All the parents were snappy, tense and unhappy, except two who were in the Bahamas. <laughs> A child lay asleep in his bedroom. He was horribly red-faced and porky. He caused family risks by requesting his gifts to computer ten quid and a yorkie. In the lounge sat his mother and father, in not the most pleasant of humours. Grandma was there, collapsed in a chair, having just overdosed on satsumas. <laughs> it was cold in the lounge room that evening. They had a gas fire, but they lost it. It was frozen and murky, and so was the turkey. They left it too late to defrost it. The door of the lounge room burst open. There stood Santa Claus, reeking of liquor. He said, I'm 19 stone too. I guess took down the flu. I've come to the door, because it's quicker. <laughs> well, what do you fancy for Christmas, said Santa, all twinkly and merry? A fur coat or a bike? You can have what you like. In the meantime, bung over the sherry. Well, they couldn't decide what they wanted. A new car, a subscription to Booper, a pedestal mat. Well, they thought about that. Father Christmas passed out in a stupor. <laughs> He was out of his brains, he was legless. The late night and the sherry had wrecked him. He lay on the floor till a quarter to four until reindeer arrived to collect him. <laughs> well, stand away from the sleigh and said, See you, Merry Christmas and be of good cheer. As he rose from the crescent, Mum said, Where's our presents? He said, Oh, sorry, I'll bring it next year. Thank you. <laughs>